What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, I have Quasimorphosis Exordium, but it's okay. My doctor gave me some pills. I think it's gonna clear right up. You just gotta give me a week or two to bounce back. This is a game that has a beefy name and also has a lot of cool ideas all priced for the reasonable price point of Free Fitty. Uh, you can get this game for free right now. I'm not exactly sure why the game is being offered for free because it seems to be fairly high quality from what I've seen so far. Uh, but the game is out now on Steam and you can play it totally free of charge. This is a roguelike in the vein of Doom RL or something like Jupiter Hell where you are a space marine uh, trying to escape from a spacecraft that is full of all kinds of mutant nasties. You are part of the personal military for a Wayland yutani style corporation uh, that's very, very dystopian and grimdark. And the game is violent and it is bloody and has fully destructible environments and a lot of really, really cool details. So we're going to dive on in today, take a look at the game. I guarantee you at some point I'm going to mess up the game's name. I apologize if that happens. It's just like when your game has a name like Hufflepuff Hockey Puck, you know what I mean? It's hard to keep track of, you know? Like, Hasseldorf Hulahan. Like, it, it's just, it's a beefy name. So I promise you there's going to be some edits up in this one just from me messing up the name repeatedly. But without further ado, if you wanted to get this game after I play it here on the channel, you can look down below in the description. I'll have a link for you like I always do. There'll also be a link to my Discord and my Twitch stream just in case you wanted to hang out and get a little bit closer live. Uh, let's go ahead and dive on into the game. We'll see if it's something that you think is awesome or not. I honestly think this game has a lot of merits. There is some stuff that I'm confused about because there's not a lot of coverage of this game. There's not a lot of tutorials and stuff like that. Uh, so I may be relaying wrong information. I've played for about two hours and I've got like the general hang of it. But there are like sort of things that are unexplained in the UI and whatnot. It's a roguelike, you know what I mean? They tend to get kind of granular. Let's start a new game. Uh, there's text right there that kind of explains what happens. The downside is that the text plays too fast, so I'm not even going to try to keep up with it. Uh, basically, the storyline is mankind went to space because we depleted the Earth, we ran out of resources, and we started looting all the planets around us under the watchful gaze of corporate governments. Um, what happened is, apparently there's kind of like a field around most planets that like human greed or whatever activates, and it causes people to turn into, like, slavering monsters, zombies, xenomorphs, all that kind of stuff. It has happened now on this planet. We are on our ship, and we are trying to escape, and we are, like, the military branch of one of these corporate governments. So anyways, 23 hours and 26 minutes ago, Ancom Corporation Station Franciva 7 was attacked. Estimated class of incident, quasi-morphic event. Task, you must get to the elevator on level 5 and power up the Ancom Broadcasting Network. Alright, so here's our first little marine. Every single time you play the game, and in fact, we got a bunch of the exact same marines this time. Normally, all these marines look different, and they have different loadouts and different things going on. So this guy's a shotgunner right here, and these guys are all assault rifle guys. But typically, you'll have like a shotgunner, you'll have like a melee guy, you'll have like a pistol guy. I think we just had really weird RNG this time around, but every time you die and every time you play the game, it's going to grab a marine randomly from this batch. Uh, what that means is, if this marine dies, which this game is hyper deadly, so I figure he's probably gonna do- Shh, shh don't say it too loud though, he doesn't need to hear that. Uh, if this marine dies, what I'll probably do is I'll probably restart the game real fast and come back in so that we can get a better spread of marines. So that you see a little bit of different gameplay and some of the different weapons that you can play around with. Let's talk about the UI. So up in the top left hand corner we've got our inventory, like our limited inventory readout. We've got this bullpup submachine gun right here that's our current weapon. It's 9mm. Uh, it's got different ammo types. Every gun in this game has like four or five different ammo types that all do different stuff. It does behoove you to take a look at the different ammos and figure out which ones are the right ammo for the job depending on what you're facing. So some bullets will like light things on fire. Some bullets have extra penetrating power. Some bullets have like a stun chance that are like attached to them. Some of them have knockback that's attached to them. Uh, really, you just want to take a look at your bullets and make sure you're using the right thing for the right job. We also have an expanded inventory. This game has a Diablo 2 style fiddly diddly Tarkov inventory where you get to play inventory Tetris. Some people will count that against the game. I don't because I love fiddly diddly inventory Tetris games. That's like one of my favorite things is organizing my inventory in a grid based game like this. We've got equipment. Uh, your equipment does show on your character. Our character does not even have a name. We just have a number and a designation. 
extra grimdark dystopian. We've started out with about 104 rounds, including the ones that are inside the magazine right now. We've got a weapon repair kit because everything in this game has durability. We started out with very basic gear with the exception of these leggings right here, which are giving us a bunch of resistances. As far as I can tell, resistances in this game are flat. Like, when you get hit by a type of damage, your resistances negate that amount of damage every single time, up to and including reducing it down to zero. Uh, so we've got, like, five blunt resist, we've got some fire resist, some cold resist, some piercing resist. We have no infection resist, which is kind of a bummer, because infection is actually a big, big problem in this game. And you might be asking, why is infection a big problem? Well, if we go down to our EKG health monitor down here, uh, these are our stats. So with our EKG health monitor right now, uh, we've got our HP, it's different for every marine, we've got our fullness, which is how much food we have, there's a little bit of a survival aspect to this game as well. I don't exactly know what this readout is right here, I think it's our melee versus our ranged accuracy with our left and our right weapons, but I haven't been able to completely and totally figure out exactly what this is right here. From what I can tell, it has something to do with melee and ranged accuracy, but like, I, I can't tell you conclusively. That's just conjecture after a couple of hours of playing. The good news is that this information has never been relevant so far. I've been able to play the game perfectly fine without it. Our vision cone extends out eight, uh, eight units around us. So that's good. Uh, you do get wounded on individual body parts, a la Escape from Tarkov. And when you take that damage, uh, you will get different injuries. So like a burn has to be treated differently than a gunshot wound. Has to be treated differently than like a bite wound, so on and so forth. A torn meniscus has to be treated differently. Uh, it's really, really cool. The system has a lot of detail to it. It does have its little foibles and its little kind of stumbling blocks. But we'll talk about that later if it actually comes up and when it happens. Uh, either that or remind me. Down here in the bottom right, we have the Skull Project. I'll be honest with you, I have no idea what this menu does right here. I have no clue. There doesn't appear to be anything interactable with it. I fiddled around with it for like 20 minutes trying to figure out exactly what this is over here. Uh, this upside down pentagram devil menu. No clue, actually. It looks like there's slots for things to be put in. But it may not be implemented yet because the game is in like point two right now. So this may just be a holdover menu that doesn't do anything. Or I've been playing the game and I've just never noticed that certain items can go in here. I I'm not exactly sure what this is for. This right here is a differentiating system that the game has. So basically every X amount of turns. So you see how it says next phase on 100. When we get to our 100th turn, the enemies upgrade and evolve. And this is basically a synopsis of the evolutions and their effects on the monsters that we're going up against inside the dungeon, basically. Uh, so anyways, right now they don't regenerate, they're not that aggressive, they don't have damage resistance, they hit for only 80% damage. Like, later on, that's going to get a lot worse. Uh, so keep that in mind. Let's go ahead and move through the door right here. These consoles, uh, they have lore information, like basically propaganda letters from the Wayland yutani style corporation that we work for, like effectively brainwashing us and telling us that we're doing like the Lord's work and stuff like that. I'm going to skip over them because you guys are interested in the zombie slaughtering, not so much the reading from consoles. At the beginning of every game, you get a medical storage over here. You should loot it. Uh, medical supplies will save your life in this game. We got a sorbent. Uh, basically, this is for treating infections. And then this right here is a bandage, which is for healing piercing wounds and giving yourself a vague regeneration effect. Let's go down into the dungeon. Okay, so we are on the cargo dock. Let's take a look around. Our goal is to find the elevator to the next level. We've got a soda right there. I'm going to go ahead and take that. And we've got a bunch of zombies inside of here. I'm going to go ahead and waste him. We'll waste him real fast. And we'll waste him real fast. All right. All the zombies are... Oh, God. That one's got a gun. Okay. All right. I'm scared. I'm officially terrified. I don't like being shot at. Uh, being shot at in this game is really, really bad for you. There we go. We dropped him. You basically want to prioritize killing any zombie that has a firearm. Uh, because a gunshot wound in this game is hideously dangerous. It actually mirrors real life. Where, like, you can get punched, you can get smacked with a club, you can even get stabbed with a knife, and you can kind of stitch yourself back together. But my general experience is, you eat more than, like, one bullet. So you've got, like, one bullet's worth of leeway. After that, eh, it's all up in the air. Bullets do a lot of damage in this game. They, they hurt like hell. 
and actually the fact normally gun zombies don't show up for a while and so there's there's that's a problem uh, lots of little details here so things that you'll notice is the shell casings on the ground any spot that we stop on and discharge our weapon will put shell casings on the ground uh, we will track blood when we walk through a blood puddle uh, in addition there is a different there's a different sound so if you walk on metal it makes a clank noise but if you walk on blood on metal it makes like a squish or kind of like a wet noise as you walk across it like I said this game could have sold for like money like there's lots of cool little details in here uh, if I discharge my weapon and it misses and it hits the wall the wall will get riddled with bullet holes and eventually get destroyed like there's lots of cool little things in this game uh, that I've been paying attention and noticing as I've been playing. Another interesting factor is that, ooh, antibiotics, dude. We're set up pretty good right now. Assuming we don't get one shot, there's a pack of cigarettes. I'll take that. We've got a sorbent right there. Okay, good. Infections are like my number one cause of death in this game. So I'm really, really happy to see that we've got ways to get around that right now. Uh, this is a medical, this is a basically an auto dock. You hook yourself up to it and it patches you right up. So we're going to save that for later just in case we get wounded. We have another zombie with a gun down on in here. Now, when you mouse over enemies, uh, those little dots right there, if you've got unimpeded light of sight, all the dots will be blue. If there's any red dots in there, that means that you're taking an accuracy malice to your shot, and you kind of want to avoid that. I'm going to drop the one that has the gun first. Drop that one, too. Wow, we've got a lot of gun zombies in here. This is bad. Uh, we've got a severed arm right there, which can be used as a melee weapon. I don't know if I'm quite ready for that level of escalation yet. I just, I don't know if beating a guy to death with a severed arm is is on the docket. We've got a aluminum splint over here. You can tell because one of the orange ones, man. It's one of those ones that has the aluminum liner in it. I only know that because of Escape from Tarkov, but anything else around here? I mean, lots of medical supplies. Normally, medical supplies are a lot more scanty. Uh, I'm going to shoot the dog, shoot you. He's got a gun trying to get that barrel right there so that it'll kill them all and I won't have to waste ammo firing at them. Uh, stay away from flames though. Flames in this game so if you walk across them you'll get burns and then on top of that if you light a zombie on fire and a zombie comes up to you and it hits you it has a chance to ignite you as well and so these are all things to be kind of like paranoid and worried about. This is a central hub console. What this does right here is it allows you to scan the complex and scanning the complex so what'll happen is different, you see how these all say on? So basically loot detection is on, enemy detection is on, and exit detention, uh, exit scan is on. Sometimes some of these will be disabled procedurally, and so like you'll be able to see where the loot is at, but you won't be able to see where the enemies and the exit are at, so on and so forth. Uh, we know that the exit is up to the top left right now, but it looks like this area of the dungeon, this is a big dungeon. Normally they're not this large, so we've got a lot of work in front of us here. Uh, it looks like the enemies have gotten their first evolution. They now hit for 20% more damage, and they regenerate a little bit if we leave them wounded. Not great. Oh, I did not want to fire my gun right there. Ooh, is that a med kit? No, it's a pack of chicky noodles. Okay, I like noodles. Let's go ahead and... Ow, dude. I got shot. Did we take a wound? We did not. We just lost HP, so apparently it was like a grazing hit. Good. Drop those guys. You got any ammo? He's got a piece of flesh. I'm not going to eat that, dude. That just seems... Cutting a chunk off a zombie and just hoping that there's no bad health effects is not the sort of business that I'm in right now. What we need to find is we need to find an ammo container. If we can find an ammo container, we're, we're running out of bullets right now. Things are not going great. In fact, there is a really, really remarkable chance... Oh, we're hungry, too. Well, here, let me do something about that. I'm going to eat the uh, chicken noodles real fast. How did that do for my satiation? Good. We should be set up for a little while. All right. Well, it says that where we want to go is up into the left. I'm guessing that this corridor cuts in both directions. We do have this down door right here, so I'm going to go check that real fast just to make sure that we're not leaving anything behind. Uh, we're not leaving anything behind except for about a million zombies. Ow, I've been meleeed. We've taken a wound. All right, what happened? Uh, we got hit in the shoulder, and we have frostbite, apparently. That's weird. I every time I take an action, it costs me four damage. That's not the worst. I think we can just bandage it. There we go. We'll bandage it real fast so that at least we're not taking damage whenever we raise and discharge our weapon. He's got some pants. 
I need ammo. Like, we've got food, we've got medical supplies, but we've got no bullets. Like, I'm legit on my last magazine right now. Step back. We don't want to get lit on fire. Ah, our shoulder got infected. So this leads me to my first point. Um, infections seem to happen no matter what you do in this game. I think the infection chance needs to be, like, severely lowered because what I found playing the game for the last couple hours is no matter how fast you bandage or treat a wound, it seems that you get infected no matter, like, what you do. I mean, there's not a lot of information available. I'm gonna go ahead and use some sorbents. There we go. That got rid of our infection. Oh, no, it did not get rid of our infection. Okay. Okay. There we go. That got rid of our infection. Now we're good to go. Now we're now we're doing all right. Oh my god. Uh, we have two bursts left. This is not great. I need to track down a knife or something. Yeah. Oh god. Okay. All right. Fair enough. I am now officially injured. Uh, we've got a T-shirt over here. What is that? Balaclava mask? Okay. Balaclava mask isn't going to help us out too much for right now. We officially have, like, no weapon, and we're really, really wounded. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to come back over here, and I'm going to auto-dock myself back up to full health. There we go. So we're feeling better now. I'm going to pick up this severed arm. Oh, I missed my shot, and there's so many of them, dude. Oh, no. I should have picked up the severed arm, but normally you don't need things like severed arms to survive. Uh, normally you have like a knife or like some kind of holdout weapon. Unfortunately, we do not have a holdout weapon. I think this is probably where- oh god, we're getting swarmed. Okay. Yeah, this was a really rough start to the game. Uh, he's down. I guess I'm just bludgeoning enemies to death with my, with my weapon right now. Luckily, my blunt... Oh, I was going to say, it looks like my blunt resistance is mostly holding. Come on. Oh, dude, no. Rough run. Rough opening run. I knew it was going to be a problem because I didn't see any ammo around. Uh, we've got this new character. What's up with him? So he's got higher health than our last Marine. He's got differing stats over here. I'm guessing the accuracy loss is due to the fact that he's using a shotgun. But in fact, I like the shotgun. You get a lot of bang for your buck with shotguns in this game. This game does shotguns pretty well. And so, like, I think we're going to be all right. This is a roguelike. There doesn't seem to be any progressive element to the game. And there doesn't appear to be any type of leveling up or anything either. Um, I'm assuming that's what the Skull Project is. Is at some point you're going to be able to evolve yourself as well as face evolving enemies. Now that's an auto dock that's all tapped out. You can recharge it if you have energy cells uh, that you can pull out of energy weapons. Unfortunately, we don't have any energy weapons. Uh, he's down. I'm going to go ahead and lock and load real quick. I'm going to let them get a little bit closer because I'm honestly not that worried about them being close to me because I have a shotgun. And in fact, we get a lot more, we get a lot more punch and we get a lot more killing power if the enemies are close. Our range on this shotgun is not severely limited, but it's limited enough. See, so you can see that the wall right there has buckshot all up inside of it. If you use larger caliber weaponry, the bullet holes get larger. Uh, your bullets actually occupy physical space in this game as well. So, like, you noticed, maybe, uh, while I was firing this way down the corridor, the pellets that missed this guy, they hit the guys that were in the back on other tile tracks, uh, which is actually a really, really nice feature, too. I like that a lot. Like, your bullets don't just, like, miss XCOM style and do nothing. Like, they have penetration. They have mass. Like, they exist inside the game realm. So that, like, even if a bullet misses in this game, it hits something effectively. All right. We're going to play real aggressive right here since we're a shotgunner. I've got another. Yeah, I'll take a bandage. That's good. Uh, we got another loot crate right there. I'm just going to move up on this zombie real quick. There we go. We'll drop him. And that's a t-shirt. I don't need a t-shirt right now. Lots and lots of free t-shirts around, which explains why 
Uh, there's so many people trying to get on this space station. I don't know if you've ever seen the important documentary Pinky and the Brain, but one of Pinky and the Brain's plans to get all the human beings to move to the moon was that they did a free t-shirt giveaway on the moon because everybody loves free t-shirts. And so this game is obviously referencing that incredibly important cultural artifact. Uh, we've got 9mm, hey, we got some 12 gauge slugs, good. Alright, so hopefully we won't run out of ammo like the last time we played. We got some leggings right there. Don't much care about them. We got some bandages. I need food. There's a can of food. Okay, that almost fully fills up our meter, so that's good. Uh, I've starved in this game. I've died of infections. Like, basically, I've run out of ammo. Everything that can go wrong has gone wrong in this game. But I actually sort of like that about it, that the procedural nature of the game is actually quite aggressive. Like, sometimes you have everything you need with regards to, like, health items. But, like, you don't have everything you need with regards to, like, food. Like, it's kind of cool how the game works. There we go. Drop that guy. He got any ammo on him? He's got a severed leg. I'm going to go ahead and take the severed leg for right now because of what happened last playthrough. I don't trust that it's not going to happen again. The enemies do have battle damage, so they have, like, multiple states of decay. So if you notice, while I'm shooting these enemies, their chest cavities will rip open, but they'll still be alive. Like, they'll lose arms, they'll get their face shot off, but they're still coming at you. Loads and loads of really good details in here. Like, I've seen paid titles for, like, 20-plus dollars that don't have the details that this game has. And so, honestly, I find it to be kind of shocking that they're just, like, letting you have it for free. Um, so definitely... Ow! Don't shoot me! Ow. Oh, that's not great. Yeah, he turned into a giant flying monster thing after we killed him. A little horrifying. Not great. Uh, we got any loot containers around here? There's a dead guy over there, and I don't even know who killed him. Wasn't me. I can't take credit for that one. My body count is kind of high, but it ain't that high. Uh, he just threw a grenade, so I'm backing up. Unfortunately, the explosion wounded me. But my hope is that the fire will also kill the zombie. Let me take a look at my wounds real fast. Uh, we've got a medium injury. We've got burned and it already got infected. Yeah, the infection chances need to be reduced, like, severely in this game. Like, the infections are just way, way, way too frequent. However, all those zombies are dead, which is great. Uh, I've got a pretty gnarly wound right here, so I'm going to glue my stomach back up real fast. And then I think I've got a sorbent, so I'm going to go ahead and use that. I've got antibiotics, so I'm going to go ahead and use that. And I think we should be, for the most part, patched up at the moment. We are hungry, so I'm going to go ahead and eat my can of food real fast. Looks like we got them all. I'm going to check for loot containers back here. Wait, that guy's got loot on him? Hold on. Oh, he's just got a foot. Okay. Down he goes. I do appreciate the fact that they used like a four frame animations for the death. That's really, really nice. It makes it look a lot smoother and a lot better. Like it really does increase the quality of the death animation. These big rooms can be a little bit risky. Be careful about entering into any of these open space rooms because what will happen is sometimes there will be a guy with a rifle or a pistol on the other side and if you're running a short range kit like I am, uh, you won't have any way to deal with that particular threat and it will get bad very, very quickly. Oh boy, they're about to upgrade again. We may want to swap over to slugs pretty shortly, just to get a little bit of extra punch. I've only got five rounds left anyways. A little bit more loot in here. What you got for me? Another can of food. That's good. I was kind of worried about our food supply. Pack of cigarettes. Ah, we've got a beat stick baton. All right, so I'll throw out the remains. When you throw stuff out, it does exist in the game realm. It just sits over there until further notice. Uh, so don't worry too much. We've got 12 millimeter slugs right there. That's great. We're going to need those very, very soon. We've also got dragon volley. I don't know what dragon volley goes to. It looks like it's a larger caliber round than the 9 millimeter, so probably a rifle or something like that. Oh, it's a shotgun shell. Okay, so it effectively converts our shotgun into a flamethrower. All right, cool, man. Sounds good to me. We've got two more sorbents right here, just in case we have any other infection-related problems. Uh, 
Um, I'm gonna fall back for a second and let them come to me. I've only got two shells left, so I need to make sure I get this dog. Ooh, not great. Okay, so what's the wound look like? We've got heart damage. We got bit in the heart by a dog. Ow. Yeah, that would register, in my opinion, as painful. I think that, like, so my observation about the health system is that if you stabilize the wound, it should have no chance of getting infected, basically. Uh, so what should happen is this little thing over here should turn green, basically. So, like, you have one wound, and you still have one wound, but it should turn green, implying that it's been treated and you're okay. And then once the treatment wears off, if the wound still persists, it should turn back red again and basically have kind of like an autopause almost. Uh, that'll be like, hey, your treatment is worn off, you know, and you can disable it in the options. Do you want to reapply? And, and then something like that, I think, would be a really, really good choice. Okay. Because as of right now, it can be difficult to tell when the stabilization of your wound falls off. Just, a, just an observation about the overall arrangement of the UI. It looks like that one healed and did not get infected, and I can tell you honestly that in, like, two hours... That is the first time I have ever had a wound, like, not get infected. Like, they just always seem to get infected. That's why I'm so hungry for antibiotics and, like, sorbents. Oh. Christ. That's not good. Uh, give me the slugs. There we go. We'll slug that boy up. What do the slugs do? So, they've got a 20% critical chance, they've got a 15% stun chance, and they've got a chance to pierce through enemies. Sounds good. Ooh, a crash 17. It's a 16 round shotgun. Okay, so it looks like it's a lot less accurate. I'm willing to give it a go because I've never seen this gun before. Let's go ahead and unload our ammo real fast and we'll load that on in there. I am curious about how good this shotgun is. Oh. Oh, it fires three shotgun shells at a time. Um, that might be a little bit of overkill. In a game with limited ammo, I don't know if I'm on board with venting three shotgun shells at a time. There is an alternative option here where we could keep this as a secondary. And if we go up against anything really, really thick and really fortified, you know, like them double C alien demons, uh, we can break that out so that we can boom, 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 and like triple shot basically a shotgun shell into them. I think that might work out okay. Like leave slugs in there because that gives us a 10% chance to stun on three separate shots, which means that we can also use that to stun lock enemies. That seems like an okay plan to me. We're a little bit hungry right now. I'm going to go ahead and drink that soda. We're a tiny bit wounded, but not wounded enough yet to where I feel like there's a lot of merit to using some of our healing supplies. Uh, this is the exit to the zone. So once we get in there, we're, we're out of here. Uh, there's some more slugs right there, and it looks like we've got some 9mm. We'll throw that in there. I would like to pick up like a sidearm, like a pistol basically, like something that I can kind of just whip out if I run out of ammo. Uh, in like a tense close quarters situation so that I don't have to reload. I don't know if you noticed, but reloading in this game takes a really long time. Uh, and so like reloading mid-combat is basically inviting the enemy to bite you in the... Is that a wizard? I think that was a wizard. I mean, he kind of looked like a wizard to me. Okay, yeah. All right, I can see the merit of the crash right there. The crash actually saved us right there. They were closing the gap. I was hoping he was going to drop that sweet-ass voodoo death stick, like that that, that sick-ass voodoo stick that he had, but he didn't. I'm going to go ahead and detonate that so that any zombies in the room, if they try to close the gap, they catch a fire debuff and possibly burn to death. However, we don't want to be like anywhere near that guy because getting lit on fire in this game is bad. I know that that probably goes without, that probably goes without exclaiming that getting lit on fire is a terrible plan. I'm getting shot up pretty good right here. I need to bait these pistol guys into a better position, I think. I'm going to go ahead and eat some food real fast. Ooh. 
Ooh, he killed his own guy. Did he die? Oh, he must have died. I must have had a bleed effect on him or something. I, I didn't expect him to drop like that. Either that or, like, my shot penetrated, went through and hit the guy behind him. Could have been either or. Another pack of cigarettes. Severed leg inside of a locker. That's a weird thing to bring to work, Dave. We've had talks about this. HR already told you. This is a weird thing to bring to work. Like, we don't care what your hobbies are at home. But here at work, please stop bringing severed legs. Oh, my God. Okay. All right. Dragon, dragon breath rounds are a terrible idea. That's what I just learned. Let's go ahead and med kit some of this pain. Uh, we are now really, really wounded. Uh, we've got an infected stomach burn. Okay. Let's, uh, yeah, these dragon breath rounds, let's never use those again. Uh, apparently, dragon breath rounds in close quarters are just an awful idea. Uh, because not only does it shoot the fire forward, it shoots the fire everywhere. And, and so, like, I'm, I'm, I'm not okay with what just happened. That's, that's real, real bad. Still doesn't look like there's anything we can do inside the skull menu. I must just be missing that mechanic entirely, and I'm so, so sorry if that's the case. I'm going to go ahead and stabilize this wound right here. All right, we popped a couple sorbents, and we're looking good now. I think we're going to be all right. Drop him. Oh, there's an auto dock in here, but it's got no charges. Okay. Like, I was about to be upset if I used that many resources and there was an auto dock, like, right around the corner. Let me reload real quick. You got to make sure, like, take every opportunity in this game to rap tap bang and get, like, your mag topped off because, like... You never know. Like, you'll walk into a room, and there'll be, like, like exactly. There'll be, like, 50 zombies in there, and, and then you're just kind of... Woo, thank you, armor. I needed you. Uh, we're going to step over to here so that we're kind of behind cover. Ow. Oh, that's, like, super bad. I don't... Oh, hold on. I'm going to drop that giant death alien real fast. That nade's about to go off. Oh, okay. We're all right. Things are things are not as bad as they could have been. Uh, taking a grenade is generally ill-advised in this game. If you get grenaded in the face. Oh, the dog got through the fire, huh? Okay. Oh, my God. Oh, he one-shotted me. Well, I wasn't watching my health, but... I have no idea what that thing was. I've never seen that mob before. But yeah, this is Quasimorphosis Exordium. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I think this game has a lot of care and a lot of cool details. All it really needs is like a polishing of the infection system. And then so the addition, if I missed it, I apologize. Uh, like this seems like this is going to be the progression system. And that feels like the one big thing that's missing is like your character leveling up to counter the fact that the enemy is leveling up as well. I would definitely like to be able to put points into like rifle proficiency efficiency and like hacking doors like I think there's a strong chance that I don't know if you guys ever played Sword of the Stars the Pit but Sword of the Stars the Pit is kind of like this game where it's a futuristic sci-fi you know military roguelike and it had all those mechanics dude I think that would really help out like you have to hack the auto dock in order to use it or you have to have like a key card that you found around the map little things just to add a little bit more depth and a little bit more contemplation to the playthrough I think never hurt a game that like leans on proceduralism very very heavily uh, my name is splattercat i sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to today up on the chopping block we had quasimorphosis exordium oh my god i did it i did it i didn't call it like quasimodo quackenbrook or anything i'm so happy with myself i will see you all tomorrow with something hot and fresh off the indie skillet thank you for stopping on in and that's about all that i've got for you bye bye everybody